Hey everybody, it's Kyle. So I don't know if you're familiar with the story of, uh, of Viktor Frankl, but Viktor Frankl was an Austrian psychiatrist who was swept up uh, into a concentration camps when the Nazis took power. Um, and, you know, he tells an interesting story about watching as the Nazis basically stripped everything, including the identities from all the Jews that they put in concentration camps. And, and what happened? You know, they really were intent on turning the Jewish people into basically stripping them down into nothing and then kind of just forcing them into animal-like behavior. But Viktor Frankl said that something interesting happened, that there were those who did definitely uh, move in that direction. I mean, when you when you haven't eaten in four, five, six days and they throw a scrap of bread to 20 people, there are going to be some who fight for that scrap of bread and, and fight for survival. But he also said that just as many achieved uh, saint-like status. And, you know, there's a lot of, of takeaways from his book, Man's Search for Meaning. Uh, and depending on who you ask, you'll hear different takeaways. But there were really three real powerful takeaways for me that kind of, you know, I was able to connect with a little bit. Um, and I think autism parents can connect with a little bit. And those were three, three things I want to share with you. You know, the first was, you know, he said that, that certain of them achieved saint-like status. And as he dug in, he realized there was a couple of reasons. Number one was that they didn't let the way they were treated control their thoughts. So, you know, the Germans were brutal. They tortured them and, you know, they, they tried to get them to kill each other and just all these horrific events. And there were certain individuals who decided, I guess, that no matter the circumstances, they wouldn't let the Germans control. That was the only thing they could control was their thoughts. And they didn't want them to go towards hatred and anger. And, uh, and they didn't want them to turn into those kind of thoughts that the Germans wanted them to have, which was survival of the fittest. So that was the first thing. The second thing is, is what was interesting to me is he said some people survived... And every person that survived had two things in common, a purpose, and uh, that purpose gave them hope. And some of them had a purpose, and generally those purposes were based on love. Um, they wanted to be reunited with their families, and they, they were going to survive to do that, or they wanted to tell their story, or they wanted to, uh, you know, they had reasons to stay alive and, and it gave them purpose and like I said the second thing was that gave them hope I think the most important takeaway that I learned and understood and all of them were important was that these prisoners of war these prisoners in these concentration camps the ones that survived and achieved saint-like status decided that this was not their new life. They didn't give in to the thought that they would be in this concentration camp forever and that they would suffer forever and they would suffer endlessly. They didn't, they didn't make that decision. They didn't decide to be that way. And certainly that gave them hope. But refusing to acknowledge that this was only going to be this way for a short time, that something was going to happen that there would be a trigger that would free them or help them to escape. There was always that hope and they knew better days were ahead. And I think at one point in our family, we were scared that this was our new life. And I remember uh, looking at my wife and thinking we can't, we can't be satisfied or content and just live like this because it's going to tear our family apart. The stress and strain was so overwhelming. We felt like we were in a combat zone consistently. I mean, we'd wake up 
dreading what was going to happen that day. We'd walk around all, all day on, you know, tiptoe around like we were walking around on eggshells to try to avoid the next meltdown. Or we walked around in fear and worry of what was going to happen that was going to cause more stress and more tension in our home. And, you know, when we decided this was not our new life and we were going to make some changes, that was really a powerful motivator for our family. So I want to compel you to remember those those three things. Don't let what's happening in your life control your thoughts. Don't let them take you down a path of discouragement and despair. Uh, have a purpose, and I know you have a purpose. Your purpose is to serve your child on the spectrum. Enjoy that service. Learn to value that service properly. Uh, in my humble opinion, there's no other calling in this life that's more valiant than to be in the service of those that can't do for themselves. So honor yourself and do value that properly and let that fill you up with happiness and joy to know that you're serving and loving for the right reasons. And third, this is not your new life. Your past does not equal your future. You can make changes that will allow you to start thriving more and lower the stress and tension and bring back some of that peace you're after. If you're not sure how, contact us. Click on the link, go watch our webinar. We'd love to help you. You can do it. We're, we and so many other families are doing it right now. And we're succeeding. And we want that for you. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.